what we were talking about, AI is this new big shiny object and it just happens to have a million use cases in your business and in the marketing content business. And you realize that and you're willing to get ahead of it, start to go with the, be one of the early adopters. And I think that's really important. I think there's two thoughts on that. Like one is fear and the fear it's coming from my insecurity to adapt fast enough. And the other one, it's excitement because honestly, who isn't? But um, quite frankly, the scary part, it's like, for example, I show you this tool that literally just, you can grab the link, paste it, and immediately create 10 clips subtitled as you want it, the hook exactly as you want it within a minute. And I realized, oh shit, that's my business. And I either have two choices, either let it eat me or leverage them, right? Leverage friendships, reputation, connections, and just how do I use all of these tools to provide them value while I still can and make money in the process. Welcome back to the Virtual Ventures Podcast. Today we have a special guest, Diego, a friend of the podcast and someone I've been lucky enough to meet lately. I'm really excited for everybody to hear his story. Diego is the founder of Shorty, a content media company, and I'm excited for you all to hear about his journey and the way that he got to where he's at right now. Diego, what's up, my man? Thank you, Andres. Appreciate the introduction. Yeah, for sure. I know we were together yesterday, so a lot of good conversation. I'm excited for people to finally get to hear about your story. You're actually on the back end of a lot of people's amazing stories and help that kind of happen. So it's cool to get you the ability to kind of talk about yours. Maybe just tell everybody a little bit about you. I appreciate you for that. I never thought about doing this. Thank you for pushing me to do something like this for the first time. Yeah, I'm 31, Venezuelan. I came to the States about six years ago. I'm a political refugee from Caracas and currently I own shortc.co with my co-founder Danja and we run basically a short form repurposing agency as well as a content agency and we started about a year ago and now scale that business to six figures a month almost six figures a month actually and right now we are on the verge of creating a new entity with my new partner Sam Knight and yeah life is exciting <laughs> yeah that's awesome and to transition from another country to the United States. How was that kind of process and, and how have you enjoyed your time in the States? I think, first of all, America, it's amazing. So I'm incredibly grateful to have leverage and opportunity to come here and work. For the first few years, it was hard, definitely, because I didn't have social security or working permit to work legally. So I had to either create a business or work illegally doing like $10 hour jobs, for example, stole or not stole. I rented an identity to drive Uber. <laughs> for like nine months. And I think that formed a lot of my current values, I would say. So that whole experience from coming to the States and working from zero to being here now, it has been like a whole roller coaster. And I honestly cannot imagine my life if I told myself four years ago where I'm at. <laughs> That's amazing. And I know when we spoke originally, you got started doing Uber when you got to the States. And I think I remember correctly, you telling me that you thought it was just going to be Uber. You were happy with the money you were making driving and you figured you're already, I forget how old you are, 28, 29 at the time. And you thought Uber was enough. And now look at you at this point running a business that's almost generating six figures a month in revenue. Talk about that experience a little bit. I think I went through a lot of failures, probably with drug addiction. It's tons of business failures, cryptocurrency investment failures. And ultimately that was like my rock bottom in life. The Uber experience was just me saying to the world, like I'm 29, I've been a failure in my life. So I'm just going to dedicate to this and just live a normal existence, just training in the morning and doing 14 hours long drive, listening to podcasts. But through that experience and listening to podcasts, I think I educated my mind to in ways that I've never in the past. So I got into this habit of just idolizing business owners, entrepreneurs, listening to stories and just learn uh, skills through specifically marketing skills that I could leverage and sell skills and ended up having a conversation with a guy that was in my ride for an hour. And he told me like, what are you doing? 
driving Uber, come work for me. And I had already a working permit by that time. So that relationship was very fruitful. He gave me a job as a SDR. This was pre-pandemic. And during the pandemic, I remember clearly I was working as an SDR for this company was going broke. And I decided to grab their database and just outreach daily to all of their contacts automated through like a basic script and just outbound daily and close deals that way. And I got a call like one month in asking me like, what am I doing? What Like, how am I getting results during that period? And I just explained my process and they offered the basically to be their director of marketing. And through that experience, I think it's how I got to the short form and the content side of things. It allowed me to experiment, even though we were a merchant cash advance company, which I fucking hate, <laughs> like the product, the values, whatever. I had the opportunity to work with somebody amazing there that teach me everything I know today and just experiment a lot. And in one of those experiments, we were hiring a kid from Fiverr to do the content strategy for this bank or this finance company, right? And yeah. this kid had a natural skill and he was 19. He was escaping from Russia and we hit it off. And I decided to tell him like, hey, I want to start something with you. I'll pay you. I remember, I think it was like a thousand bucks per month of my salary from the bank to this kid. And his name is Danja. And we started creating theme pages. And one of the th theme pages was called Top Business Podcast. And through that, it was just sort of like a, I listened to the podcast that I like. I talked with Danja. We created the clips and then distributed them. And then we did that through months. And I realized that as I was doing that exercise, we were getting a lot of traction. And one of the podcasts that I liked the most was My First Million that I heard back when I was doing Uber. Great and podcast. That, yeah. <laughs> and he started noticing that their clips were overperforming the rest. And this was probably like June 2022. So beginning of the summer. And it was just when Andrew Tate was like massively intensifying that short form strategy. But we grabbed that and do, did it for like podcasts. And back then it wasn't as commoditized. So I just decided to reach out to Sam through the social proof of this side. And he finally answered the DMs and just strictly text, right? Through a theme page. He doesn't know who I am. He just knows that I'm making videos that are making him popular. Yeah. So I asked him like, do you mind if I do this for you? And he said like, send me... 10 videos and then me and Daniel just like I literally was at the bank and just him and I was like okay we picked this we picked that we this is the best like our favorite parts like from our experience listening to a podcast and just put it out there and just he said like fuck I love this but I don't trust you and I said like well why would you what you want me to do let me call you and he no no I don't want to talk to you send me your social security your license and your girlfriend's license I told him that I live with, I have a girlfriend. And he said, okay, this is my data. And we started doing that. And I think it was a combination of being him being Sampar and us like grabbing that wave in the beginning that allow us to just kill it out of the park for him. And eventually like that relationship allowed me to just meet incredible entrepreneurs and just sell them on that service and that's how Shorty came about i met my co-founder through fiverr i met sampar through call dm and then by adding value to somebody that i admire my life completely changed and here we are just handling a bunch of accounts that i cannot even imagine a year ago suffering from imposter syndrome all day long until i think about a month ago when i started realizing that we're into something special and, and life is more beautiful than just comparing yourself to to others through money or whatever this vanity metric is. That's amazing. And some people would think that your strategy to, to get in front of Sam, like the requirements that he had, some people wouldn't have taken that risk. Some people wouldn't have just said, screw it. This is a life-changing opportunity. Let me just send this guy my, my information. And look how it worked out. I mean, you've created these amazing relationships. Even last night at our poker game, you were showing people the accounts you had like to when we were talking about Shortsy. And one of the people at the table was was like no way i love that person i'm not gonna say who it was but he's like i love that person you're the one that's helping like post those things like that's amazing like, i watched that and i think that's super cool and i'm a huge fan of sam and, and my first million so that's how you and i met through me being a fan of their podcast and hearing you get shouted out i was like whoa like let me do some digging and it wasn't easy because you didn't have an instagram i had to kind of go through twitter and look up shortsy and find the link and come to us talk later it's because we 
were getting too many customers. We couldn't handle the amount of inbound coming. Talk a little bit about that part, like partnering with Sam, how that beginning stages were before he decided to endorse you and and put his name behind the product you were putting out. Because I know it wasn't just, hey, you made me 10 good clips. Here's a big shout out. No, no, it was, I believe, four months of free work. And I told Danya, hey, I think we have the opportunity to provide value to somebody that can help us, but let's do it without the expectations of anything in return. And I remember I kept paying Danya for that work. So I took a risk and I clearly remember telling Sam, like, this is my cost. This is my structure. This is who I'm working with. This is how our our process is. And he said, okay, fine, work for me for free and let's see. We didn't miss a single day. And I think one thing that people don't realize with this fucking social media content game is that the majority of the automations out there doesn't work if you want to be extremely popular or like have a high reach. So it requires a lot of manual work that at the time we didn't have a VA assigned to the account. I didn't knew if this was going to pop off or anything. I just had the experience of running a hundred person company, managing a budget and just adapting those systems to this one. And when he finally decided to start sending us client, the first client he sent us is a big name and we fucking screw it up because he wasn't a big shot like Sam in the content game. He was just a famous entrepreneur that wanted some content and we blew it and bombed. And I was very upfront with him. I refunded him the money. And then he decided to send us more clients and then more. And then other people started talking about us and through that sort of like back and forth of like refunding people that we were not capable of fulfilling and then others that we actually killed it. I think it kept us really like transparent. And I realized that, dude, if you're honest, transparent and accountable, to people you admire and respect, they're going to do the same for you. And that's sort of like the first strategy we use. And then one day he called me for the first time in six months working together. I never talked to this guy other than a text. And he said like, okay, I can start referring you clients because you kill it. So are you ready? And I said, yes, but I didn't have, it was only me and Danya. Didn't expect to have my calendar full of 500 leads. So I just started calling my college friends. A salary in Caracas, it's like 200 bucks. This are college educated bilingual guys and if you offer them a thousand salary job like you're doing them an immense favor but yeah. the quality of the work it's much higher than for example an employee I had here a merchant cash of that company from Miami uh-huh. so I thought like okay I can scale I can help my friends and I'll just do the calls myself so I remember he tweeted out this was December and within the first 24 hours I had all January booked from 10 a.m. to 12 a.m. every single day. And I just took every single call and just for onboarded client, we onboarded like, and I think our churn that month was like 40%, but we ended up with like 25 new clients uh, on the first two weeks. Yeah, I think we got up to 35, 40, but suddenly realized that we didn't have the bandwidth to handle that amount. And here we are, like we kept the majority of those relationships, we keep having a lot of business coming our way through strictly referral because I've never wanted to be public. I always thought that my story was very corny or cliche and I was very afraid to tell it. And I think you're the first person that actually asked me shit about myself. Um, so I appreciate you for that. <laughs> Cause yeah, I mean, like, let's be honest, anybody that hears this is going to realize it's unfortunate that, I mean, I'm happy that I was the first one, but I mean, your story is amazing. Like you're political refugee. You come to the United States. You failed multiple times. You think that you're just going to be complacent and enjoy America, Miami specifically, drive Uber, get by, and you continue. You get presented another opportunity and you take it and look at what you've turned it into. I mean, it's pretty amazing to say that you're running a business that's almost doing six figures in sales a month. I want to highlight a month, (laughs) not a year, and that you're able to kind of continue to, to grow this and have these relationships with amazing people like Sam and people from My First Million. So kudos to you for that. Yeah, that, I also don't believe it for a while, you know. It's like such a high so fast. The fear of impermanence, it's always there with you, especially when you fail so many times. So you're always like, how long this is going to last? And that's why I think like Danya and I kept reinventing ourselves. And I think it's clearly like a problem scaling an agency business. And I think the same week that I met you thinking about how we're going to get commoditized the fuck out of short form. <laughs> if we don't do something more original, I met another short form agency owner through Twitter. I never networked ever in my life, never like put myself out there, but 
that week after meeting you decided to do that. I met this incredible entrepreneur, Sam Knight, having the same struggles that I am. And we found that we complemented each other really well. And as far as shorts goes, I still have an amazing relationship with my partner, Dandia. We have a thriving business. But then we're constantly thinking of ways to challenge ourselves. So now we... Uh, created this company called Artifacts. And I think it's a way for us to put a step further in the content game and just deciding, okay, how do we compile all the learnings from the past year and make them permanent in a brand or a business, right? And it's like, if you think about it, like all of the short form agency or marketing, what in the strictly pure sense of the word, what you're doing is just grabbing attention from somebody and making them take an action on a business, on a person, on a podcast, whatever that is. Whether it's a sign up, whether it's a sale, whether it's a listen to an episode, all you want is to just stop them and make them come to you. So really the medium doesn't matter. That's why I found it funny that over the past, I think like two months on Twitter, like this like short form dudes come on and you just realize that they're playing a different game. And like, it was never our intentions to, to say, oh, we are the short form game because truly what we are is just like a value added to a business, whether that's Sam to his life and time, whether that's any other sort of entrepreneur we met, like at the end of the day, you're just coming in to solve a problem and helping them with a solution. It yep. doesn't matter really what you do in the middle. And I think I'm aiming towards that after I met you. And I finally feel like I'm not the failure I thought I was going to be, <laughs> if I'm honest with you. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, that's amazing. And it's the fact that you're just continuously innovating, like I, we were having these conversations yesterday, something that's really hard for businesses. And like, even I suffered when I ran my businesses a few years ago. If you don't get ahead of the curve and start to realize what's happening, a lot of people are kind of like, think that the good times are never going to end, but they somewhat do. And if you're not being a very adaptive and getting ahead of it and actually capitalizing on the change, those are the people that get left behind. And like what we were talking about, AI is this new big shiny object and it just happens to have a million use cases in your business and in the marketing content business and you realize that and you're willing to get ahead of it start to go with the be one of the early adopters and i think that's really important and i would love to kind of hear your opinion on ai marketing short form like what do you think is coming with that i think there's two thoughts on that like one is fear and the fear it's coming from my insecurity to adapt fast enough and the other one, it's excitement because honestly, who isn't? And especially somebody that has like, like you and I been like, we toy with new ideas and we like our cu curiosity. It's like our guidance, right? And yeah. with AI, that's the like, it's like the best relationship I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> but um, quite frankly, the, the scary part, it's like, for example, I show you this tool that literally just, you can grab the link, paste it and immediately create 10 clips subtitled as you want it, the hook exactly as you want it within a minute and I realized oh shit that's my business and I either have two choices either let it eat me or leverage them right leverage friendships reputation connections and just how do I use all of these tools to provide them value while I still can and make money in the process <laughs> but um I think where we're going Andres it's just you're gonna be able to create content with generative AI in prompt base so imagine creating a movie I think we were talking about this last night where you can create create a two hour movie that your experience is going to be different than mine due to the way that this content will be portrayed and think about what this new sort of like vector database is called it's it's able to do so you can contextually tell the same story differently meaning you can see the movie from the female character perspective or their male character perspective or you can see a movie from a neo-punk theme or i can watch it in the disney theme but it's the same movie and the same story so i think for content if you're not in the edge exploring innovating and you're still using i don't know premiere to edit four hours your content as much as that's useful because that's the business right now, you need to be toying around at least an hour of your day on these new tools, both for like the content game and the business side of the things. Because I think I showed you the other prototype that I saw this weekend yeah. where essentially this amazing repository was made public on Friday. And now I saw, for example, an agency doing all of their outbound strategy, both email, text, and calls 
completely automated through AutoGPT. And this is not a, like a prototype. No, this is a real one-man business doing a thousand outbounds per day with proven subject lines and iterations on context and conversation and answering those in a way that looks natural. So how the fuck are we not going to compete, right? <laughs> like, I think uh, it's exciting. It's it, like, I agree. There's fear and then there's also excitement, which is natural whenever there's change. Something that I guess I want to ask you from this, because I always think this since AI has become much more popular. AI is 100% going to wipe out the bottom one third performers. The middle people will be able to leverage it kind of. But do you think that this actually opens the door for the people who are really, really good at what they do? No, yeah. I, th I think it's different. I think the, the concept that I see here is that it makes mediocre people 10x people mm -hmm. and it makes it makes 10x people more obsolete than before. Think about engineering, right? Before you needed to have Faf input, like no enough languages to interpret the data and solve problems. Now you can do that with like a complex prompt, but you don't need to know any of those four things. So yeah. it makes what it made a good engineer before worse. I would say that the ones that are ripping right now are machine learning engineers, right? Like those are the, the alphas of the competition right now and i would say that e every company should have a talk with one of these to understand it how they can implement them themselves because if not we're not going to be able to just stay ahead and also like i gotta say like a lot of these tools will be obsolete in a year from now so what's going to happen i think it's also that we're going to see so many iterations that within a year everything that we're talking about or perhaps just open ai stays like a big or a stable diffusion right but other than that like I feel like it's going to be a lot of experimentation in the process. And that's what excites me. And I think you're seeing it as well. Like every day there's a new tool. Crazy. So, yeah. And it's, it's harder to make the decision as a business owner. Okay. So where should I put the leverage? And I think the answer is I should try everything every single day instead of just putting all of your eggs in one basket. It's just, let me try it. Let me see it for myself. And then, okay, how can I put somebody more talented than me on this tool to help me grow or help advise? to a business i think that's for yeah no i agree and I, I think founders every day have to become more and more technical um because the less technical you are the more money you got to pay for other people to do things that aren't really that complex and like so much of what we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis is now centered around technology and computers like almost everything's a tech company now if you think about it like i was just presenting on this recently at my regular job banks a traditional bank brick and mortar they're making software acquisitions on a regular basis to keep up with their online banking their website like all of these experiences like tech is becoming deep rooted in everything and if you're behind the eight ball on that good luck catching up to some of these ai conversations and things happening right now i'm interested to understand like what is a company like yours like a fortune 500 company doing on like do you see that as at the at the level that you're in or like those are not part of the conversation like ai applications and ways to leverage things oh no that has been a conversation for a long time it is not new no one's surprised there's right but do they implement anything fast enough or it's just a lot of bureaucracy in the middle i'd say it's it's in the middle like it's a it's a really big company so it takes time for things to fall all the way down the food chain right but i mean they are typically ahead of the curve like implementing certain things leveraging tools making tasks easier but i know tons of companies that are slow and and that's kind of how you get left behind in reality so yeah so it's definitely something that has been talked about a lot it's top of mind in almost every conversation and again i hope that businesses don't get left behind because they are so far behind the technological eight ball because i think for a while we've said oh if you're not using technology you're behind and you have been but you're still able to survive i think it's moving so fast now that you just won't be able to keep up with these other companies it's just becoming easier and easier to actually start a company from like an internal standpoint and like there's like i mean it's become really popular being a solopreneur like company yeah. with one individual that leverages technology and runs multi-million dollar businesses like that is not going away so i think it'll be interesting because we've just been on this hockey stick now like where does it stop like when does it end i don't know i think that's one of the things that i like the most the ability to just spin one product being a solopreneur now 
Like you don't need a hundred people in one team. You can do all without even having to know how to program these things anymore. The agency that I mentioned to you, it's an SEO agency and the guy, it's very tech savvy. He's making 280 grand a month and he doesn't have any employees and fulfillment is all automated. And the inbound now it's automated. The last thing that he wanted to automate, he could this weekend. So imagine how much he's able. To, and also the reason he's making money is because he's being, he's adding value to these companies. It's not like a zero sum game whatsoever. Yeah. So, but now he is able to be in a thousand rooms where he didn't have to before. <laughs> so it's just amazing. Yeah, no, no, it's crazy. And like, if you just go around on Twitter and find your way into the entrepreneurial kind of Twitter groups and things like that, you will see there's plenty of people who are doing this and making a boatload of money owning these businesses solo because they're just using so much automation. It's really impressive. Well, something I kind of like to do at the end of every episode, because I know we're coming to that time, unfortunately, is very simple question. Don't overthink it. Tell us something you're excited about in the near future. I think I'm excited to start this new brand and help spread the words of and like the products of this AI software companies that don't know how to do content. And I think that's where it like, that's what excites me so much because now I can leverage what I learned throughout the year, the people that I met and the content knowledge that you gain through that repetition and now apply it to a niche that you're very passionate about. So I'm going to dedicate the full year ahead, just trying to be like onboarding these companies or these solopreneurs or these products and just allowing them to tell their story through short form, through text, through whatever new sort of like marketing tool we get, but uh, I'll be sure, I'm sure to leverage it. <laughs> so that's where I'm working towards with Sam Knight. That is awesome. And it's amazing. And I hope you are able to help these companies grow because the more tools we get, the better it is for everybody. It's, it's only going to be helpful. So that's amazing. Lastly, Diego, thank you so much for coming on here and, and telling this awesome story. I want to make sure that people who maybe want to look in a short C or, or what you have going on can follow you, talk to you. I think you'd be like an amazing resource. So where can people follow you and, and feel free to shout out anything as well? <laughs> thank you. I think I didn't want it to be public until like I met you and Sam and lately I've been trying to do an effort to be more active on Twitter. So I think people can find me on Bed and Court P at Peter at Twitter, sorry. <laughs> and then yeah, shortc.co and now this project called Artifacts Labs. If you want to hit it off, I'm looking forward to talk every day with somebody new that it's doing something exciting and just talk about business on a daily basis. All right. Awesome. And I'll make sure to have all that linked below in the description. If you made it this far in the episode, make sure to like, follow, subscribe. We appreciate it. And again, thank you for coming on, Diego. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much, Andres. You're awesome, dude. Thank you.